And uh, I'm Mike with Minnick Manufacturing. We're gonna uh, tear down and inspect a uh, 9350 air drill today. Give you some pointers on disassembly and what parts to look for that are common normal wear items and things that I normally see on a somewhat of a regular basis on these. First thing we want to do is we take our drill, stand it in a vise, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, just make sure it's good and sturdy so it don't drop on you. Okay, we'll take the uh, air tube out of the end of the drill for starters. We'll inspect that, make sure your tube is in place, make sure uh, it's not wore off on the end, uh, basically that it's in good working order. The side rod bolts off, and we'll start disassembling. Okay, careful when you're taking it apart that the whole thing don't come apart at once. It's easier to take it apart in pieces as you go. Okay, we can take this, we'll lay it on the bench. Okay, when you take the rifle bar out, you got the pawl springs and plungers in here. Watch, they don't just they, they don't get scattered about. Cool. Okay. okay. There's there's the spring. There's the plunger, and there's the pawl. Okay, and what you'll find on these wear wise is they'll wear right on this edge here as it goes around the ratchet ring. This actually sits in there like this and it'll wear that edge off. And these, this is a new drill so you won't see any wear here, but I do have an old one. We'll do a comparison shot. As you can see, the wear edge right there and that was one that was starting to slip. So when you start seeing the, the, the rounded edge, it should be a nice squared edge like on the other side. Let me pop this out. Okay, on the ratchet ring itself, See if we can get a good shot on that. You can see here there's a flat on top of that tooth. Of course, this is a new drill, so there'll be no, no wear on it. And we have a, a used one here. You can get a good shot on that. You can see how the top of the tooth is completely rounded off. This one, this one was to the point it needed replaced. Uh, it might have went just a little bit longer, but you know it, it was time. So that this is fairly common wear items. You know if you're having problems with a drill, this is about always the first place to look when you open one up because that's the highest wear item on this drill. Let me pop the rest of this out. On the automatic valve, this sets in the drill, this nature here. You want to take this apart and look, of course this one's all greasy because it's been new assembled, but make sure all them air ho holes are open. I've seen uh, pieces of rubber hose uh, that's broke free when you had a bad hose get stuck in there and then the drill runs slow or won't run at all if it's bad enough. And then the automatic valve you can see how that moves back and forth nice and smoothly. You know, they will stick, they get rusty if they get too much moisture in the air coming through. Uh, you'll want to look at this area here, make sure it's clean. 
no rust, no pitting, no deterioration of any sorts. And the same on the other half where it rides. On these surfaces here, make sure they're clean, smooth, uh, no pitting of any source. Uh, air holes, make sure everything's open. Uh, there again, rubber hose, you know, bad hose will create all sorts of problems for these drills. That's probably the, the biggest thing you see uh, uh, as far as not uh, problems that isn't normal wear will be, you know, dirt coming in or from a bad hose or chunks of the hose. Okay, next we're going to take a look at the, the rifle bar and the rifle nut and the piston assembly. And kind of wipe this off a little bit. There again, this is a new drill and it's all greased up from where we assembled it. Okay, give you a decent shot of that. Okay, this is what this actually looks like that's threaded in there. And we'll start on that. This is a brand new one, and this is one that we have replaced. And you can see the wear will be on the tooth as it goes down through as this, the rifle bar actually goes in, it spins in a spiral. We'll do it on the new one here. It actually turns on a bit of a spiral that's where you get your ratcheting effect out of it. But they wear on the inside. You can see we've got a nice wide flat tooth. Well this one's starting to get thin. This one wasn't completely worn out yet, but this was here you got it in your shop it's starting to go that wouldn't last very much longer it was time to replace that one this is uh, also a fairly I wouldn't say a high wear item but it's common to see them wear out it is a wearable item so something to keep an eye on as uh, you're tearing the drills down and looking at them always double check this real good on the rifle bar itself you'll see if you follow the edge of this down See how this is this is a brand new piece of course this looks really nice nice square top smooth sides chamfered edge and then we'll we'll go to a used one here I think I like the other one better and this one really isn't real bad this is one of mine that I use for a special tool but you can see you're starting to get a little bit of a lip at the bottom showing some wear it's getting a little bit narrow it's just uh, that one it, it's showing wear it's not really a bad one yet but it, it it's starting to show a little bit of a wear but you will see them to where these are narrowed way down uh, with time if they've been run with lack of oil or dirt uh, the, this would become a, a, a replaceable item and to replace this nut in here that actually threads in and it is a uh, a left-handed thread. You bolt this in some means of a vise. We use a chain vise here, a rigid chain vise, and then you put that in there and then put a large pipe wrench. It just takes a little bit of force to thread it out to pop that loose, and it just threads out. And then you take the new one and thread it back in and tighten it down. Uh, fairly snug. You don't have to stand on a five-foot pipe wrench, but you do need to get her in there and get her tight. Okay, I'm going to show you here how, how this actually goes in. I've got two new parts. Get her started there. And that should thread in fairly easily. If you're having trouble, it's probably uh, cross threaded. And then that'll thread in. And when it hits bottom, you'll know it. It should be close to flush, maybe a little, just a little bit below. And then bolt this in your chain vise. Put the pipe wrench out here uh, and basically that's just a, a an old part that i had that we use as a special tool so that is something you will need to have around your shop okay next we're going to look at the the rotation sleeve and the sleeve bushing and the sleeve nut okay here's the one we pulled out of the drill that's what it'll look like as a an assembly 
There again, it's got some air holes in it. Make sure that's that's open. No uh, uh, form material, anything of that nature. Okay, and the way this looks, similar to the rifle nut, you just gotta nut that threads down in there. And it is, again, a left-handed thread. And the way we do it, we take an old one and use it as a special tool. Put this in your chain vise, hook onto this with a, a pipe wrench, thread her in, and uh, tighten her down good. And then to do the, the, the bushing, we'll get this out of here. On the other end, this actually will get pressed in to look like that. Okay, this actually will be pressed in this way. What you have to do is you put this, stand this up this way. We have a special tool we set this in, and then press the bushing out the bottom, and then turn it over and put green Loctite on it, stand her back up, and put, press this back in. And we have a 50-ton press that we do that with, so you're going to have to have a pretty good hydraulic press to get that to move. It takes a bit of force. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the tools that we have. We've made these in our shop ourselves. That'll stand up like that. And then this goes right down in. And then you press. You're actually, what you're doing on the inside is pressing the bushing out the bottom. And that's really nothing more than a piece of tube with a little bit of machining on it to have a lip to set it on. And then this is nothing more than a piece of round stock machined down to fit down between the, the sleeve nut. And then once you get that removed, stand it back up. Tapered edge goes down, a little green Loctite, push her back in flush. And that's it's really not that hard to do, it's just a matter of having a big enough press to make it move easily. And this, same as everywhere else in the drill, you want to make sure that your air holes are open, run some solvent through it, blow air through them, make sure there's no obstructions. Uh, when you're disassembling these, they'll be fairly dirty up front because of all the dust and everything in this area. Make sure this gets cleaned real good. Uh, in this area here, look for scratches, any seize marks on here and down towards the front, which we turn it over and get a little better shot that way. Because this actually will sit in there like so. So if you see any scorn here or here or here, look in there and make sure it's not uh, damage in the front head assembly also. One thing you will see a fair amount of wear on is the bushings. Make sure I get the right name. Yeah, front head bushings. These set in there like that. You see where this one's broke. Vibration and time, stress. And then they wear where the latch rubs against them. Uh, this you will see occasionally these will actually sometimes vibrate and start working out and twist the latch around so the latch doesn't work quite as good. Uh, this is something you know you need to keep an eye on, make sure the latch works. It needs to be tight, but it needs to be functionable. When you open it, it needs to take some force, but it does need to move. When you have this assembly apart, uh, and I seize the pins where they run through here, and then there's a pin across the front uh, make sure you anti-seize some kind of a, a grease or something to make sure they don't seize up on you. And this is what we use, Napa brand anti-seize. We buy it locally. Uh, work seems to work real well for us. Uh, I think we've covered basically everything on this. Uh, we can start the reassembly process. Start with the front head in the vise. Snug it up, but don't get it real tight. 
you don't want to distort that uh, front head assembly. You could actually do some damage here if you got real carried away. We always want to apply some grease to the mating surfaces. May take a little while for the grease or for the oil to get there. So you want some lubricant in them when you first start them. Put a little grease down in the, the threads of the, the nut. I'll put a little grease on the bushing. And this stuff all should go together fairly easy. If you have to take a hammer and really fight something, you need to check. Something may not be quite right. This all should, uh, you know, without a lot of effort. And we'll want to put a little grease on the machine surface on the inside. And then you have to watch how this does go together. Make sure you assemble the drill with everything pointing uh, as it should be. Air holes, get all that to line up proper. Okay, we'll want to put a little, little grease on this machined area. There's a pin that sets down in here for an alignment. You'll want to grease that groove for the alignment pin because if that seizes in there for moisture, condensation, or anything, that'll hamper your ability to get it back apart. So you want to put a little grease on that. Okay, we'll assemble the automatic valve here on the bench. Apply a little grease. Slide that in, see how nice that moves. Should move freely. If you have to fight with it, it may have a, just a wee little piece of uh, dirt or you know, a piece of lint off of a shop rig or something. You wanna make sure that works freely. And when you go to put that part on, that is where you need to tap a little bit, to get her to set down in there. And again, make sure we grease the the groove for the alignment pin is we don't want that sticking. Okay. These are all fairly tight tolerances. So when you go to put this stuff in, don't don't get in a hurry. Take your time, get it to line up and get it to drop right in. You know, if it don't go, don't start smacking it with a hammer because it, it, it needs to be lined up nicely to get it to go. Okay. Next we get the ratchet ring. I always put a little bit of grease around the outside just to make sure the next time I want it out, I can get it out without having to get real forceful. Again, the ratchet ring should drop right in. You know, if it's, you may have to tap it lightly, but don't get carried away. If it's too rough, take it back out and take a look at it. Okay, we're going to put the Paul springs and plungers back together where we had that apart looking at it. Take a little bit of grease, grease the area where the pole rides and put a little bit down in the hole for the spring. Our spring goes in first. The, the plunger has a flat edge and around it, uh, around its side. The flat side goes towards the spring. Hold that in with your finger and the pole will drop right in. Put the spring in, flat side down. Let's try to do it so you guys can see instead of me, like that. And take the pole, slide it right in. Okay, we will want a little bit of grease on the rifling. 
and then we will want a little bit of grease on the inside of the ratchet ring now once you when you grease all this up and put it together the when you first go to test it it may run just a little bit slow for the first minute or so just because of the grease but the grease still really needs to be there slide this in you'll need to close the poles in and then carefully turn it and it'll eventually it'll find its spline and, and drop right in that way okay then we'll want to put a little bit of grease around it put some grease on the top no dry spots okay what do they call that we get the back head assembly one thing we should note on this look in this area here make sure there's no debris take and flush this out with solvent when you're cleaning it uh, I have seen chunks of uh, air hose that'll get through into here and then, then it starts deteriorating and then it gets smaller and then it starts going through the drill and so I've pulled some pretty big pieces of air hose out of here so something to kind of look for keep in mind as you're working on a drill okay We'll make sure our, our rubber seal is still there. Kind of line it up, wiggle around, and that should pretty much drop right on. Uh, now when we put the side rod bolts in, nobody likes anises because it gets all over you, but if you have to take this drill apart two years from now, you'll appreciate a little anises. There'll be an area here where it'll be kind of concealed and then down here and then also on the thread. So we'll want to turn this around, hit a little bit here, hit a little bit on the threads. And after you disassemble a drill that nobody ever done that to and it's laid in the bottom of a hole with water in it, it'll make you start doing that. We'll do the other one uh, roughly the same way. When you tighten the nuts down, you want to be reasonably careful to tighten them down evenly. And then these do need to be torqued. That way you have a consistent uh, tension on them. Right now, I'll just kind of snug them up by hand. Okay, the torque on these is 70 pounds, 70 foot pounds, clarify that. And the way I like to do her is start at 50. Do it in a couple steps, you get a lot better torque that way. Go 50 and then uh, run your torque wrench up to 70 foot pounds. And then I like to, once I got them both torqued, kind of double check it and make sure they're even. Okay, now we'll put the, the air tube back in. There again, we we'll want to make sure it's not all damaged, bent. Make sure it's straight. If they get bent a little bit, they'll show wear in the middle. Take a blow gun and blow through them. Make sure they're open, run solvent through it. Make sure there's no debris stuck in them.
when you put these back in, make sure the ceiling washer is on there. If that's missing, you'll get air leakage. It'll come loose. It just won't work out near so well for you. And we just tighten that up good and tight. Okay, before we take it out and test it, always a good idea to put you some drill still in the end. Roll it over, make sure it rolls fairly free, make sure it doesn't roll backwards, like so. That ensures that everything's in line, it's free, no, no, nothing in there is a, a, in a jam or a bind or anything. And you can get a shot here, you can see on this one the serial number is sketched into the flat on the front head assembly. Uh, it's good to keep track of that. That way you know what drill you done what to. And after this, it's time to put air to it and take it out and test run it. Uh -oh.